Hey guys, Halfway Dead here with another episode of Rocket Science. This one is all about the Dead Zone. Why does it exist and what is it supposed to do? The Dead Zone is a solution for a problem that every joystick has. In every controller there is a spring system that's pushing the analog sticks back to their center position. The purpose of this is that you can let go of your analog stick and your car won't keep turning. In practice the recentering doesn't work perfectly and that would cause your car to still steer slightly. This is where the dead zone comes into play. As the name suggests, if your analog stick is in the area of the dead zone, the game sees it as perfectly centered. Only when you move the stick far enough to get past the dead zone, your car will start to turn. Let's look at a one dimensional example for simplicity. Each axis has a value between minus one and one. The top bar shows the raw value of the controller and the bottom one is what the game sees with the dead zone. Even with the high dead zone, it's still possible to make slight and steep turns, but the usable area gets smaller, which might make it harder to be precise. In two dimensions, dead zones can have a lot of different shapes depending on what is implemented in the game. Rocket League uses an axis independent dead zone. This makes the math exactly the same as in the one dimensional example. If we look at a graphical representation, without gradients this time, we get a red area in which the stick movement is completely ignored and yellow bars in which one of the directions gets ignored. In this graphic I added an arrow which shows the current direction as well as the magnitude that gets used by the game. There are a couple of disadvantages with a large dead zone. First of all, the usable area gets smaller. This means that you have to move the stick a lot to get even small movements, which is the reason why the game feels more responsive with a lower dead zone. The other important one is that because of the axis independence, the direction in which the car turns in the air is not exactly the same direction as the direction in which the stick is pointing. Turning isn't the only part affected by the dead zone. Dodging is too. First of all, let me explain the requirements of a flip. If you add the absolute x and y values of your analog input together and they add up to 0.5 or higher, you will make a dodge. This means there is a 45 degree tilted square area in the middle which is dodge free. Dodges always have the same amount of power, regardless of how far you push the analog stick. The blue areas that you're seeing represent the angles that will make perfectly straight forward, backwards, right or left dodges. The green area is where you can dodge almost any angle in between. I used to believe that there are only 16 directions because I heard it somewhere and was a keyboard player, but it's pretty much stepless. There are only 11.5 degrees of angles per direction that you can't dodge to because they will make perfectly straight dodges instead. Now that was how it works with zero dead zone. If we increase it to 0.3, it's starting to look a lot different. Essentially, the game is applying the dead zone math first and then using the modified input for the rest. We lose a lot of the green area, which means we have less room for all those different diagonal dodges. But we gain blue area, which makes it easier to make perfectly straight dodges, which can also be an advantage. It's very important to understand that we can still flip in exactly the same directions as we can with the lower dead zone. The difference, just like it was with turning, is that the analog stick will not be pointing in exactly the same direction as the dodge direction will be. So which dead zone is the best? Generally, for turning, I would say that the lowest you can set it to, without having your car turn by itself, is the best. But since dodging is affected too, it's also a matter of preference. I know for a fact that different pro players use anywhere between 0 and 0.3 dead zone. I'd recommend going down to at least 0.2. If you're not doing accidental diagonal flips, then you're better off with a lower dead zone. Throughout this video, you may have noticed that all the graphics have square areas, even though most controllers have a round area. In fact, with all popular controllers except for the DS3, you won't be able to reach all the possible values on the square. The dark areas are the ones I can't reach on my Xbox One controller. This means that your diagonal turns are actually slower than they could be, but there is a solution for this. Just follow this step by step. First, open up Steam Big Picture mode. Click the cogwheel and navigate to controller settings. Check the box for your controller and make sure it's detected at the bottom. 
Then go back, look for Rocket League in your library and click Manage Game, Controller Options. Check the box, use Steam configuration for non-Steam controllers and hit OK. Now if you have an Xbox controller, you can click on Controller Configuration and Browse Configs. You can do that with other controllers too by clicking on Show other controller types. But there are so many profiles that it might be hard to find my configuration. Instead you can click the links in the video description which will take you straight to them. If you are using the right stick for the camera like default controls, then use the profile that only squares the left stick. If you use it for air roll or something, then use the other one. If this helps you, then please upvote the profile so it will be easier to find for others. If you can't get it working with your controller, then you can do it manually by clicking on the joystick config, additional settings, set the dead zone shape to square, the dead zone outer to as high as possible but not the maximum, and the output anti dead zone to as low as possible but not the minimum. If you have the anti dead zone at zero, then Steam actually adds a 0.25 dead zone for reasons that I'm unaware of. And if you have the outer dead zone at max, then the squaring gets disabled. After doing all that, you can close down the big picture mode. I'd recommend to go to the Steam settings under in-game, uncheck, use the big picture overlay when using a Steam controller from the desktop, so you can use the regular Steam overlay. Because your controller will be slightly more sensitive now, you might want to consider increasing your dead zone in-game by 1-3%. to Lastly, I want to mention that the 2D graphics in this video are actually a fully functional web app that I've created for you to play around with. I really hope it helps some of you get a better understanding of the dead zone because I put a lot of work into it. If you found this video helpful, please share it and follow my twitter at halfwaydeadrl.